Oh, snap. It's another snap review from the family gamers. Oh, great. Do I need to do the truffle shuffle for this? Uh, goodness, no. Oh, this is okay. a family thing. Okay. okay. But you can help. Okay. Now's the time for you to smile when I say, this is a snap review for the Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff, a Coded Chronicles adventure. Coded Chronicles is a series of puzzle games from the op, which started with a Scooby-Doo adventure that we reviewed a few years ago. We'll link to that below. This one, which is based on the movie we all know and love, it feels a little bit older, targeted maybe for players 12 plus. The game is set in three acts. Each one plays 45 minutes to an hour. You can play with uh, really as many people as you want. So let's talk about the art in this Goonies game. The art's great. It's hard to tell if they got the rights to the likenesses of the actors, but the art for them is very definitely reminiscent of those actual characters. And, you know, you're going to recognize certain things. You're going to recognize the key from the beginning of the movie. In fact, if there's a major set piece like the restaurant at the beginning or Data's gadgets. And of course the pirate ship. Of course the pirate ship. You can bet you are going to see them here. But not all at once. There are tons of envelopes to open in this game and lots to unlock. We don't want to spoil anything, but we'll tell you a little more as we explain the mechanics of how to play. Just like the other Coded Chronicles games that we've played, each major character has a book. And these characters also have specialties. Mouth can decipher things. Andy and Sloth can use items. Chunk and Mikey can explore. Stuff like that. When you come across a puzzle, you can pair up the number of the character with the number of the puzzle, and then read that entry in the correct book. But be careful. Too many wild guesses and the Fratellis will catch up to you. The game stays remarkably close to the plot of the 1985 movie. Parents will enjoy revisiting the high points, but most of our kids really liked it too, even though they hadn't seen the movie. Keep solving clues throughout the game to get to the end of the story, escape with One-Eyed Willie's treasure, and win. And win. So, Anitra, what did we expect from this game? Well, we've played Coded Chronicles games before, so we knew what to expect with the books. This system, while changing some things around, seemed to be pretty much the same. There were a lot more envelopes to open, so we expected more puzzly things. The thing is, they are both rated 12 plus on the box, so even though, like we said, it seems a little bit older, we didn't expect the puzzles to be actually that much more complicated than what we saw in the Scooby-Doo game that we had already played. I expected it to be darker than Scooby-Doo. I mean, nobody gets killed in the movie, right? But the themes are certainly darker than the ones in a Scooby-Doo cartoon. There is a lot of mortal danger. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I will say there was some language in the movie that is not in the game, so that's great. And if you remember <clears throat> the scene with the David statue at the beginning... That is also missing. Also not in this game. Thankfully. But there's no truffle shuffle, which is weird. Uh, is it weird, though? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So did anything surprise you about this, Anitra? We had a hard time finding some of the cards and components that are mentioned. Whenever you come to a reveal this map card or open this envelope statement, you must read very carefully to make sure you get it exactly right. There were a couple times we were convinced that we were missing things or missing pieces just because whoever happened to be reading that paragraph maybe missed a number or something really small. We also felt that this seemed to run a little longer than Scooby-Doo. I think this is because some of the puzzles were harder or took a lot more steps to get through to the end. It also seemed like the reading would really focus on one character for a while before switching. The explore and pick up characters definitely seemed to be doing more things than the other characters. They had a lot more to read and sometimes paragraphs and paragraphs to read. Fortunately, we were able to fix this by having people pass the books around because not one person plays a single character. Right, and this way everyone got a turn to read and really be more involved. Over the razor sharp spikes that line the bottom of the pit. Pinchers of Peril! Pinchers of Peril! Videos. With regard to the actual game, the puzzles being harder basically meant that we just kind of ignored the Fratellis, right? So we have gotten caught so many times, especially with the kids playing, that we just kind of pretended they didn't exist. We certainly kind of skipped some of the tension of the movie while playing the game in this way, but it made the game more fun for kids. Some of that tension is still present in the narrative that gets read anyway, so it wasn't like there was no tension at all. Right. So, Anitra, what do we think of The Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff, other than the long title? <laughs> well, it's a ton of fun. The puzzles are harder than we expected. 
but the game is incredibly true to the source material. This is a great game for children of the 80s and 90s like us to pick up and relive the banter and the puzzles of the movie in a more family-friendly way. But I just don't think it's going to be great for younger families. If the idea of this whole thing sounds good, you might want to check out the Scooby-Doo Coded Chronicles instead. So this game is a ton of fun, but since we're considering it for a family audience, that is going to bring our rating down a little bit. What do you think we should rate it, Andrew? We're going to rate it three glittering jewels out of five. And that's the Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff in a snap. <laughs>